All right, Cam Underwood joining us on a regular basis here at uh, Mark Rogers TV. Uh, Cam from the State of the U, of course, doing a great job getting everybody all set for Miami football with ACC Media Days coming up and summer camp as well. All right, we talked to Robert Burns just a few minutes ago concerning his injury issues and his eye-popping measurements and evaluations and grades. Well, some of the best high school football players in the nation have descended on Beaverton, Oregon. Why Beaverton, Oregon? I have no idea, but it's for Nike's uh, what they call the opening. Uh, and I know, Cam, you've been tracking that and the use connection. Yeah, Um it's in Beaverton, Oregon, the, the opening, which is Nike's premier recruiting event, because that's where Nike World Headquarters is. So instead of having a satellite camp, you bring the satellite camp to you. What so do I know? I get it, you know, and I, I questioned, you know, the idea of having it there. But, you know, the kids get to go through a tour and they get to go to the factory store and see things like that. So that's why the opening is in um, Beaverton, Oregon. So there's the, uh, the opening regionals that move around the country in the springtime. And that's where kids go for their, you know, athleticism testing, one-on-one, seven-on-seven, things like that. That's where Robert Burns uh, was a couple of years ago that I saw that spark testing. They discontinued calling it spark. They call it something else uh, now. But, yeah, so there's a lot of Miami Hurricanes commits that are there in Beaverton for the opening. Um, there are 10 commits actually there in Beaverton, which is the most commits – of any team currently uh, that are attending the opening. So that's pretty awesome where, you know, there are eight, 17, sorry, 17 kids right now uh, committed in the class and 10 of them are at the premier recruiting event in America, uh, which is pretty awesome. So uh, just running down the list of those 10, you have running backs, Lorenzo Lingard and Cameron Davis. You have wide receivers, Mark Pope and Brian Hightower, tight ends, um, Bre- uh, Brevin Jordan, excuse me, and Will Mallory, offensive lineman Delon Scaife, defensive lineman Nesta Silvera, and defensive backs Josh Job and Al Blades Jr. Uh, if you think that the name is familiar, it is because his dad was Al Blades, who went to and played at the U. Uh, and his uncles, Brian Blades and Ble- Benny Blades, also went to the U and had NFL careers. Um, and yeah, so he committed Blades Jr. That is, um, he committed to Miami on Father's Day in memory of his late father, which was a nice gesture. So those 10 guys are in Beaverton right now and uh, with 156 other top recruits uh, from around the country. And yeah, they're going through uh, one-on-ones. They're going through seven-on-seven, uh, which is starting today and ends tomorrow. I want to say the seven-on-seven tournament um, and just all kinds of things. There's uh, one-on-ones for uh, defensive line and offensive line. So, yeah, they're going through a bunch of different coaching drills and position drills and one-on-ones and things like that to develop their skill and show their talents. Um, the cool thing for Miami is all 10 of those guys that I just named are on the same team for seven-on-seven. Seven. Um, so Miami, they're able to – those commits should be able to do a lot of recruiting out there because, A, there's a million of them, and B, you know, they're all together. So it's not like, okay, two are on this team, two are on that team. Nah, this is the Miami team, basically, and then everybody else. So, you know, on that team also is uh, Kevin Austin, excuse me, from North Broward Prep, who's a wide receiver target for the Hurricanes. He's one of my personal favorite wide receivers in this class. I've seen him. He's big, he's fast, he's strong. Um, He plays for a lower tier uh, kind of high school team in South Florida, but he's very, very good. Uh, So maybe they're working on, uh, you know, getting Kevin Austin. You know, other guys who are out there would be, you know, Pat Sertan Jr., son of Pat Sertan, the former Miami Dolphin uh, cornerback who goes to American Heritage, uh, who's probably going to go to LSU, but we'll see. Tyson Campbell, who's Sertan's teammate at cornerback at Heritage, might be a better prospect down the line than Sertan, which is saying something because Sertan's like a top 10 player in this class. But Campbell is 6'3". He has a uh, state champion uh, sprinter in the 100 and 200 this season uh, in South, in Florida, which is, you know, elite speed if ever I saw it. And then a couple other guys like Xavier Williams is on a different team. He's an Alabama commit, but he goes to Chaminade High School, which is around the corner from where I live. Uh, and I've seen many people say that he's not going to go to sign with Alabama for whatever reason. And I mean, hey, if he doesn't want to go to Alabama and wants to stay home, then, you know, put on for your city. I'm, I'm good with it. But, you know, there's all kinds of guys who are out there at uh, the opening. And from all accounts, all of the Miami commits who are there are doing well. Um, I look on the timeline on Twitter and I see, you know, Mark Pope doing Mark Pope 
things, which is getting open and getting touchdowns. Brevin Jordan, on the very first play of seven-on-seven seven competition, scored on a seam route, uh, which is kind of crazy because you're, you know, shorts and T-shirt. And, uh, yeah, you hit a tight end and he runs away from the defensive backs on the other team and scores from 60 yards away, um, which is pretty good if you're patient you're wondering. Uh, Brian Hightower is making plays. Cam Davis was getting rave reviews for his ability. First of all, his build. Second of all, his quickness. Third of all, his ability to catch the ball in the backfield, which is awesome. Lorenzo Lindard, the only five-star recruit or rated recruit right now in this class, just continues to do five-star things, and he's just dominating. Barra was dominating on one-on-ones with O-line, D-line. Um, Delon Scaife uh, was dominating his matchups on uh, O-line, D-line, one-on-ones. Unfortunately, at the end of one of the reps, uh, the D-lineman he was going against uh, on a rolled ankle or something. It looked uh, from the reports on the on Twitter, I saw that it might have been a serious injury to that young gentleman. So, you know, obviously wish him the best. Uh, and I don't think it was a dirty play by any means. And I don't think anybody said that. But, uh, yeah, you know, just kind of thing. It's still football. And the O-line, D-line, uh, one-on-ones that they're doing today, uh, they're padded. So, you know, they're wearing, you know, all pads and everything. So sometimes when you put pads on, those things happen, unfortunately. But, yeah, you know, uh, 10 commits out there. They're doing really well. Uh, the first game of seven on seven that I saw, I think they won 29 to 16. Um, and, yeah, um, did I mention Josh Job yet? I don't know if I did. No, I didn't mention Josh Job. Like well, I mentioned him in the list, but I haven't said, you know, how he's been doing. But he's been doing really well. He's, you know, physically advanced because he's already 19 uh, years old. And, uh, yeah, he's just doing really well in coverage and, and performance during the seven-on-seven seven, uh, part of the tournament and also the one-on-ones. Alblaze Jr. has been beasting uh, in the one-on-ones. He was one of the only people to be able to cover uh, five-star wide receiver Terrace Marshall from Louisiana in, during one-on-ones. Uh, he also shut down a couple other guys who were just, you know, getting open at will against other guys, and they couldn't get open against uh, Al Blades. You know, he wasn't perfect. He did, you know, obviously you're going to lose a couple reps because, I mean, that's just the nature of the game. But, uh, yeah, he, he's showing really, really, really well. Um, even better than I thought because I've written even in his commitment piece that I think that eventually Al Blades Jr. is going to be more of a safety like his dad and uncle than a cornerback, which is what he plays now. But, hey, if he's playing like this at the opening against four-star, five-star elite-level guys and can keep that up, and stay at cornerback. I'm good with it. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah, there's 10 guys, like I said, out there who are committed to the Hurricanes. Um, there's a couple other targets. Uh, let me see. A couple other guys I want to name. Dennis Briggs is from Kissimmee. Uh, he's a defensive tackle and uh, seems to be down to Miami and Florida, I think. Um, but he's Miami's number one uh, target at defensive tackle to add – to go with Nesta Silvera. Um David Reese is a linebacker out there. Daniel Falele, the massive Australian, um, six foot nine, four hundred pounds, who goes to uh, IMG Academy. Um, really, he's still learning the game because he's never played a season of football. He's played one game, which is IMG spring game. Uh, but when you're six nine, four hundred pounds, and move like he moves, there's people who are going to take a flyer on you as you know a, a developmental guy with potential. Um, so we'll see how he does at IMG. Uh, this year, and that's playing with Brian Hightower, that's playing with uh, Miami's quarterback, commit Arthur Sikowski, who did not get invited to the Elite 11 or the opening, which is mind-boggling to me, um, especially since I saw him dealing when he was at the Miami Regional for the opening. Um, hey, but, you know, Falele's going to be there with those guys, so, you know, there's a wealth of talent out there at the opening, you know, you get those guys get their Nike swag, you know, they get to get out there and everything. But, yeah, you know, those guys are really, really just balling. I see, you know, every time I look on Twitter, Mark Pope has another highlight of him getting open and scoring a touchdown. Or, you know, uh, Brevin Jordan is running away from somebody or Will Mallory, the other tight end commits, jumping over somebody. Or, you know, Al Blades is locking down somebody on defense. So uh, there's a lot of talent out there, a lot of talent to be excited about. And, you know, the 2018 recruiting class for Miami is elite. Uh, depending on who you talk to, it's either first or second nationally. Hopefully, you know, there's more spots in this class still where we can add some top talent. Um, maybe even we go out of state and get a Micah Parsons five-star defensive end from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Maybe, you know, you get Tyson Campbell from American Heritage. Maybe you get uh, some of these other guys and round out this group and really bring in a group of ballers. So next year, excuse me, at this time when we're talking about impact freshmen versus uh, project freshmen, it's just a list of the recruiting class for the impact guys. And that's a good thing that you want to have talent coming to your team because even with great players, you never want them to get complacent. You don't want to have Amon Richards just say, look, there's nobody who's on my level on this roster. 
and there's not. Um, and so he takes it easy. You always want to be bringing in the best guys behind them to push them so you got guys who are hungry. And that's how the Miami Hurricanes got great back in the day. It wasn't just that we had uh, – James Jackson running back. So we had a James Jackson and brought in a Clinton Portis and also brought in a Najee Davenport and also had a Willis McGahee and also behind him brought in a Frank Gore and, 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 and. And uh, hopefully, you know, this is what we're going to be able to get back to in recruiting. So, you know, the opening is a great place to start with that. It's a really great showcase for the Miami Hurricanes recruiting class. Hopefully these guys stick together and we keep balling.